Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 5 starts now. The hunt continues for a predator who attacked a 63-year-old woman. Now the community is involved going door to door until they get this guy. The melee in from the state, they are lower than what we were seeing last week. 17,008 new cases over the past three days, so the average at 5,600 cases a day. 83 new deaths also being reported, including 32 from a review of vital records. Looking at the seven day moving average, cases are still on the rise over these past three Mondays. Back on November 8th, we were averaging 4,100 cases per day. Today, that average is above 7,000. The number of new outbreaks has also just been released. Yeah, the state is reporting 140 new outbreaks in schools. That is actually up from last week and comes as some districts made the call to go virtual this week. We have the complete list of outbreaks at clickondetroit.com. So let's bring in our Dr. Frank McGeorge here off the top. Uh, Frank, the lower numbers, so what can we make of them so far? Well, you know, Kim and Devin, I wouldn't draw a lot of conclusions from the numbers reported today. Here's the thing. While it's always really nice to see even a brief dip in cases, these numbers were actually from over the weekend, and they're usually a little lower. I would also want to really see kind of how the rest of the week shapes up before coming to any kind of conclusion on the actual trend direction. And big picture, you know, we get daily numbers of new cases for the entire Henry Ford Health System all weekend. And I'll tell you that the numbers over this weekend didn't really look much better to me, so I wouldn't take this decrease to the bank just yet. Yeah, and, and with Thanksgiving just a few days away, uh, Dr. McGeorge, th thank you so much. The rush is on for a lot of folks to get tested and boosted before traveling to Thanksgiving dinner with family. Megan Woods following that part of the story. She's live at a pharmacy where uh, Megan and I hear it's been pretty busy all day. It has. So we're here at Ray's Drugs in Livonia, and this has been a saving grace for so many people getting ready for Thursday. You can see behind me the big sign COVID testing. You can see that from the road and throughout the day we have seen that long that line get pretty long right now. It's it's slowing up a little bit, but they're also giving shots inside and they tell us the closer we get to Thanksgiving, the busier it'll get. You don't want to show up, uh, you know, to Thanksgiving with your mashed potatoes and your COVID. And to do that, some people are being proactive. We had a young lady today. Um, she needed she actually needed a test before she goes to um, a, out of the country. You've seen the surge. And even though I've already gotten the vaccine, I do not want to take any chances. Between the testing and shots, it's creating quite the rush at locally owned pharmacies like Ray's Drugs in Livonia. We have a lot of people here telling us that they're um, not able to get at some of the chains or some of the urgent cares aren't able to see them for, you know, weeks. They're getting people in the same day, even taking walk-ins if they can, because they know timing is everything, especially with testing. The turnaround. On the PCR is one to two business days, um, but with the upswing, there could be a delay in that up to maybe 72 hours. Wayne Health is seeing the same rush at their mobile clinics across Detroit. The CIO, Dr. Philip Levy, says with the holiday season, Michigan in its fourth wave and leading the country in terms of COVID cases, now is the time to be vigilant. It's really important to get tested if you are going to travel. Even if the place you're going doesn't have a testing requirement, people can bring you leftover turkey and, and stuffing and all of that, but don't bring your sickness to other people. And both that doctor and pharmacist are saying do not wait last minute if you need to get a COVID test before Thanksgiving. I mean, Wayne Health, they have mobile sites all the way up to Wednesday throughout Detroit. And then there's a local pharmacies like this one. So check in with them live in Livonia. I'm Megan Woods, Local 4. Police have now arrested a second suspect in the murder of a Detroit mother. Andrea Tucker, as we reported, was shot and killed in her driveway last week shortly after dropping her children off at school. We await word on charges, but again, a second suspect now in custody. Tonight, we're learning chilling new insight into a sexual assault of a 63-year-old woman on Detroit's west side. The crime had volunteers out canvassing the neighborhood as the person who did it is still on the loose. Let's get to Sean Lay. He's live tonight with more on what he's learned. Sean. And Kimberly, there's late word from the family that this 63 year old is not doing well at all. Here's what happened actually over the weekend. Such an outrageous crime. People in the community, I want to show you, they printed up 
Crime Stoppers posters went out to the same area of where this awful sexual assault happened, passing out those posters in the rain to raise awareness that this predator is still on the loose. It was last Saturday, a 63 year old woman was beaten and sexually assaulted in the overgrown front yard of this vacant church at Joy and Martindale on the city's west side. She was left there all night suffering until she was found the next morning. It was shocking um, because that is something that normally doesn't happen in this community. Darius Stewart knows the woman and her family well. The victim has been in a coma for days and may not be recovering as well as everyone in this neighborhood had hoped. Police canvassed the area looking for anything that would lead them to the predator. It is a crime so awful community members keep coming out to do the same and will not stop until that predator is caught. Yes, they've been door to door for the last couple of days and uh, you know, but everyone that I know They've been aware of what ha what has happened, and uh, I, I just talked to uh, one of her family members this morning, and they say she's not doing very well. It's, 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 it's just sad, sad, sad. Back here live now, community groups along with Detroit 300 returning right back to that same intersection Thursday from 1 to 2.30. They want more people to join them to continue canvassing to find this guy. They're also saying lunch will be served afterwards. Kimberly. Yeah. Sean, so what's the latest from Detroit police? Checked with them today. They're still looking for this suspect and they may go out and canvass that same area again. Yeah, let's hope he's found. Okay, Sean, thank you. We have much more to come here on a Monday. His tank. It's a danger right in your kitchen. Ovens exploding. Before you start making that Thanksgiving meal, we have an important consumer alert for you tonight. Wait till you see what some families are experiencing. The danger in the kitchen revealed coming up. And I'm meteorologist Andrew Humphrey. After highs only in the middle 30s today, tomorrow below average again after teens and 20s. Not so chilly as we go over the next few days after a chilly night ahead. But any showers for Wednesday or Thanksgiving? We'll talk about that with your Tricky Trot and Parade forecast coming up. Andrew, isn't this clever? Look at this. This is funny. Fans of that school down south using big red X's to troll Michigan fans. We'll have a closer look. Jay. An investigation continues in Waukesha, Wisconsin. At least five are dead, dozens injured. I'm Jay Gray. We'll have more on the parade tragedy coming up.